Hey everyone, I'm Des, otherwise known as Mother Prepper, and I wanted to do something a little different. I have asked Fem Prepper to join me for a quick conversation uh, to share out her own prep journey and share a little bit more about tips and tricks and resources that have really been helpful for her. And so whether you're a very new person to prepping or a full-on expert, I think this is a great opportunity to learn a little bit different um, of a perspective as well as just general information sharing. Um, so let's get started. I'm Des, mother prepper, and I'm a bit new to my prepping journey comparative to many of the people I look up to, just like Femme Prepper. Um, and I wanted just to ask you to join me today because I loved your perspective. I love the content you're sharing with you know, your followers and just in the spirit of information sharing, I really um, know that I can learn a lot from you and other team members that are just like you kind of prepping and sharing that with, with everybody. So with that being said, I'd love to kind of do a quick intro and learn a little bit more about you. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, my name is Perla. I am Fem Prepper on social media, YouTube, Instagram. I have been preparing for quite a few years. Uh, preparedness was not something new to me. Um, I kind of grew up with it since I was a Girl Scout when I was younger. And then the past decade, I've honestly started, you know, becoming more serious about prepping, especially with the way things are going right now and the pandemic and all these things. Yeah. So it's it's very important. And we're also seeing a lot of people who are new to prepping now because of everything that's happening. So it's good to have a community like we do, you know, so that we can share information, no matter what stage of prepping, if we're newbie or if we're a seasoned prepper, like we're all there to learn from each other. So I really love that about social social media. Yeah. Yeah. It's been fantastic. I know you touched on the community and you, I think you described it perfectly wherever you are on your, your prepping journey. Um, I feel like the prep community is really big on being able to share what's worked what you know, cool hacks and things yeah. to keep in mind. So this is exactly what I'm hoping to learn from you today. So thank you so much. Great. Um, I want to dive right in. So mm -hmm. you touched on it quite a bit, but, um, you mentioned how long you've kind of been prepping, but so would you say it's really ramped up the last couple of years? Yes. So, I mean, I've always been a little, you know, prepared, um, the FEMA, you know, recommendations prepared, you know, when I first started and, you know, three days is great. Then, then I started working myself up to two weeks. Um, what I really did was uh, make sure I had things in my car prepared mostly that's how I started because mm -hmm. I was always out and about so no matter where I was I expected my car to be nearby so if I had some supplies there I felt I was prepared enough to at least to get somewhere after the initial disaster or whatever happened um, so it was a very basic preparedness level just you know basic weeks food and water in in the car blankets that kind of thing you can camp out um, in my area, it's mostly earthquakes that I feel would be the, the disaster that could really potentially happen. Um, we don't have storms, we don't have hurricanes. So these are things that I, we don't have to prepare for. I decided to expand it a little more and, and make it uh, a little, a little bit bigger because I have a family. It's not just me. Yeah. And it's great. Although it's, we have to start with ourselves and we have to start somewhere. Um, so it was great that I was already prepared, but I actually expanded all of my preparedness once all of, yeah, the housing market, all of that stuff was going on. And we had some, some tiny little earthquake shakes here and there that kind of, you know, just triggers you and you're just like, okay, I need to like, make sure I check oh, yeah. Off. And um, ever since then, I started, you know, in the past five years or so, I really started ramping up the stuff that I have because I am preparing for a large family and there's like eight of us that we're, yeah. you know, we have to be prepared for. And so I, you know, I had to start small because it's very expensive to prep if you take it all on at once. At once. So yeah. I, I had to start somewhere. Um, and that's really, uh, you know, just focusing on the most important things, you know, like water, food, you know, warmth and comfort, those things, you know, immediate things. Um, mm. And then I moved from there, little by little. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah, I think 
you, you mentioned something that I feel like a lot of people when they start their prep journey kind of are taken aback by the cost. And I, I, what I love about what you said is if you start to make it part of your, you know, what you think about just on a day-to-day -day basis, the cost is really kind of spread out over time. And it's not as um, scary to think of taking on this big task of, of prepping for a family of, you know, plus eight, right? So it, it's, it can be quite a bit to people who are just starting that journey, but there's comfort in knowing that we all started somewhere, we all started small. Um, and, I, and I love kind of how you shared what that journey looked like, even in a snapshot. Um, and you mentioned to you, your most, um, I think that the disaster you would be pre preparing for just, just based on probability is earthquakes. And just for our, our viewers sake, um, you're in the Bay Area, right? Yeah of yeah. California, which is notorious for small <laughs> quakes, but they say that the Bay Area is overdue for a big quake. Um, and right. so I think preparing for what is gonna probably impact your area um, is important because you're not gonna prepare for a flood in Arizona, right? So right. just taking that into account, I think is a good way to start to plan. Fantastic. Um, yeah, start, start where you are and start with the things that are going to most likely affect you and your family. And then, you know, honestly, there's still universal things that we need to be prepped with, like water, food, you know, first. Um, but I mean, you can begin to expand on that once you start, at least with the water, the water's the most yeah. important. Yeah. And um, I think, the way you have it planned out is fantastic because you're still covering a lot of the general necessities of just any time, any type of disaster, you're you're going to need a lot of the basic things, regardless of what that is. And then kind of building on based on your expertise, as well uh, as well as what you foresee would probably be a risk or a challenge. So fantastic! It's yeah. really a uh, it's not a cookie cutter approach to prepping. I mean, the basics of what you need, like you mentioned, food, water, warmth, protection. But when you start to venture out to what's really going to make sense for you and your family, you're going to prepare for more people than maybe your next door neighbor would or a different situation than maybe somebody across the country would. So yeah. as you're starting to go with this journey, it sounds like you've really taken into account what's going to be what you foresee is going to be um, challenges that you would encounter if, you know, things hit the fan. Right, right. No, yeah, definitely want to expand on that. Once you got the basics covered, then you can start looking into what are the specific needs that you would require. You know, maybe you have, may, you may have someone who has a medical condition and you need to have extra medication for them. Yeah. So you can start expanding, you know, and, and a little bit broader and making it, you know, and modifying your, your plan along with what your family actually needs. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I think that's one that a lot of people forget. Um, one of the more common ones that a lot of people forget is, of course, the medication. So if you have a family member that requires medication, do you have ample supply? You know, and medication doesn't have to be um, something that you would think only is limited to over the counter or, you know, prescription only. Things like Tylenol, you know, Advil, you know, Benadryl. Are, do you have ample supply just in case you have to, you know, evacuate and take what you have, right? So I think those are really great building blocks to, to really think about, to get people to question if things happened in this moment, would you be prepared? And I think that's kind of the soul of the types of conversations that we're having, right? right. Um, I love that. Um, your perspective's a little different. And I think that's kind of what gravitated me a little bit more to your content because I think the elephant in the room, right? You don't see a lot of female preppers out there. You don't see a lot of different perspectives. I think the majority of the prepping community that I encountered are very much the same type of like genre where it's guns and ammo and food and fire. And we don't have a lot of, I would say, um, diversity in how we're approaching things. So I'd love to hear, you know, what is your perspective and how is your approach different than many preppers out there today? Um, security is actually a big cornerstone of prepping because there's no point of preparing if you can't defend the stuff that you have. So I, I definitely believe that security is important. So that said, <laughs> I, don't, I don't like to focus on security on my channel as much because I know that prepping and especially on social media is very male dominated and I I am sure that all of my 
prepper guys out there, they have all of that stuff covered. You know, I am not going to pretend to be an expert on, you know, guns or ammo because that's not what, who I am. You know, I'm an expert in health education and I'm, I'm an expert in taking care of my family's immediate needs. And I think I wanted to bring a more normalized perspective on prepping and it's, it's something we can all do. You know, this is what people used to do back in the day. Like they were prepared. That's why, you know, our ancestors, ancestors lived through the Great Depression. They lived through all of these really hard times in history because they knew how to be more self-sufficient and take care of themselves. And I, I feel throughout, you know, our generations, things have gotten handed to us and we've gotten a little comfortable with the fact that we can rely or ask FEMA or the government for help mm -hmm. whenever yeah. something may happen. But the truth is, is that they, they can't get to everyone. And even if you could get assistance, it may only be for a little while. And then what's going to happen after that? You know, right. depending on, on the disaster, you know, if you have a storm or a fire, which is another big issue, um, is is that your everything would be gone, and then where would you be, and how would you start, and do you even how do you even start to rebuild? And so I wanted to bring a perspective of of bringing prepping back to the way it was, because honestly, it's it's women have always taken on the role of the nurturers and, you know, taking care of the family, but also have taken it upon themselves to always stash something for a rainy day. And I think mm -hmm. that that's something, you know, we all got from our parents, you know, and our mothers, right. that, you know, you just put something away, whether it's just, the just can, in case. Yeah. Just whether <laughs> yeah. One can, you know, of food and rice and mm -hmm. for one meal, you know, you start basic, you start small. And uh, I wanted to focus my channel more uh, around the basics of prepping and, and not from a perspective of like, I'm an expert in prepping. No, I'm learning prepping every day. I'm learning skills every day. We should never stop learning. Um, I may be an expert on some things, but I want to definitely broaden, broaden my knowledge. Um, so I like to bring a female perspective to prepping and, and, you know, showing the things that other people don't really talk about, don't talk about periods and they don't talk about, you know, like needing to have hygiene, extra hygiene items. Yeah. These are things that we are more mindful of and we need, but I saw a, a huge, um, I, I saw a huge gap in between, you know, what was out there and, and what, you know, we need as women in an SHTF situation. Yeah. And so I wanted to fill that, fill that need and fill that hole. And even though my perspective is just my own, you know, if there's more of us with all of our, all of our knowledge sharing together, I think that we could build a very robust community that can help us and we can educate each other on, on how to really create a diverse plan that works for our family. Right. And I mean, cause we've seen what happens, right. When people panic and are not prepared and are ill-equipped, right. I mean, prepping isn't just all the things you can buy and acquire, but it's also life skills and knowledge, which is a big component of, you know, why I wanted to reach out and learn a little bit more and, and share this with, with our viewers simply because normalizing prepping is going to be a big cornerstone into integrating that into your personal life, right? It's not just this thing that somebody buries a bunker in the side of a mountain and then suddenly can flee. I mean, this should be a part of every day's, everyday consideration, um, especially in places in, in the Bay Area where, you know, there is always, one, it's a densely populated area, right? So when there's a, kind of a panic, that just amplifies kind of what we're going to see. And over where I live, you know, I'm in the greater Sacramento area. So uh, for us, it's a little bit more flat, but we have fires is a big thing for us with high winds. So our situations of what we're prepping for are going to be a little different, but the end goal is still the same to be prepared, to have a plan. So I really like how your approach is normalizing this to be able to incorporate that into everyday living and inspire others to think about it, to pause and ask those questions because I feel like if we had, 
if we rewind back to March and February when COVID really was shutting down many areas of the country and, and the panic started to set in, right? I don't know if we would have the same reaction to a lot of these big box stores and toilet paper and lines for water, right? If we had taken the steps to be, to think to be self-sustaining um, and a little bit more self-reliant, even as a smaller knit community or, or neighborhood or, or band of neighbors even. So I, I really like that approach. Um, yeah. I think, That's I think bringing that up, you know, the, the where you live is really important and it has a big impact on the type of plan that you need to make. And whether you have children, are they in school or how far are you going to be from there? You know, how far do you work? How many miles do you have to travel there? Just think about on a good day, meaning a day of no disaster, <laughs> traffic is extremely bad to get to work and to get home in our commute hours yeah and that's on a good day that's on mm -hmm. a day that there's no disaster with no, no panic. panic you know <laughs> imagine the panic and how it would look on the streets after an actual disaster and and you know a good way to think of of how you know the stores maybe would even look like is think of black friday you know, when people are out there waiting for those doors to open and they're rushing into that, you know, it, into it's a the, frenzy. See, it's yeah, it's it's complete craziness. I don't go out shopping on those days anymore. It's just no, <laughs> not yeah. just because of the pandemic, but it's just because it's chaos and it's like people hitting each other. Like the people start beating up somebody because they took the last toy, and then it was yeah. insane. I was seeing all that on social media, and I'm like if people are doing this and it's supposed to be a good day, you know, imagine what it's going to be like when it's chaos and disaster, like this is going to be point. times a hundred. And so would you be at the store? Think about that. Would you be at the store if it was being broken into? Would you be in there grabbing food for your family? I or would you want to be way far from all of that? Right. And so these are things, you know, I think we need to focus on the things that are a priority is like, you know, figuring out how far we are from our loved ones, you know, and, and getting to them that that should be a priority, not not having to run to the store to get the food and then figure out how I'm going to get to my family. You know, these are things that we can skip because we know we have the preparations. We can go straight to our family, you know, cutting a lot of time and getting out of the area as soon as possible. Yeah. And even if you have to walk the rest of the way and you can't get out because of, you know, closures or whatever it may be, um, you have to, you know, really plan for that too, because I live, I live. 20, 20 miles away from home. So mm -hmm. I would have to travel home, you know? Yeah. And, 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 or, you know, just meet at our location that we, you know, we plan to meet. But how do you even communicate with anyone when the chaos happens? You know, you have yeah. to have a plan before that happens because when cell, cell towers go down and the phones are busy and, you know, I mean, we all seen it. We, they, the phone lines collapse, everything, you know, it all comes down. It's like mm. domino effect and you can't even contact your family, you know, for like, do you have I'm, a plan? I'm not, I'm not a parent, but I would imagine, you know, someone who has a child would want to know their, their child's school's emergency plan. Where are they going to be at? Where am I supposed mm. to pick them up? Who am I supposed to call? And if the phones aren't working, I should already know that information, not be running around hectic and not knowing where my kid is, you know? So these are all things that I think we overlook when yeah. we, you know, when we plan and uh, I need to I call my daughter's it. school. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and those things like, yeah, who's going to be the contact for you? And if there's, if there's no contact, can you email someone, get that email, you know, like they'll, they'll let you know what their plan is. And, you know, usually it's in a field somewhere where you pick up the kids, but they'll tell you, okay, go in the back of the school. So these are things that you should know, yeah. you know, if you're trying to get in the front and everything shut down, or maybe they, maybe they relocate them, you know, to another, another location. And you don't mm -hmm. know that either, you know? Yeah. So these are things that we should know. Um, I mm -hmm. don't even have kids, but I imagine that's what I would want to figure out, you know? Yeah. Um, I imagine a lot of these parents that have kids in different, you know, different schools because of their age, yeah. you know, or, or 
anything. It's, yeah, it's pretty just your mind starts to go to the, all these situa situations and scenarios. And it's it, it, the, the worry that it creates and the anxiety is kind of pushing you to be in a productive space to get the answers, right? So these are all things that whether you're a parent or not, you should just be thinking about what is your plan? What is, what would that look like if that was to happen and strike today? Um, yeah, you're giving me some, some, I'm taking notes over here too, because I want to make sure I'm catching it all. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Um, I, and I know through your journey and it's been, you know, an ongoing thing. What are some of the challenges that you've come across that kind of stand out that you've, you've had to you know, overcome? I mean, challenges beyond the financial part because prepping is expensive. Um, it, it was getting my family on board with the idea of prepping and, and you know, them being open to the idea of having all, all the plans. It took me a few years mm -hmm. and, you know, preparing them, each of them, there's, you know, we had to create eight bags <laughs> you know so it's it, there's a lot that goes yeah. in with that and a lot of money um and so you know getting them on board just to make sure they knew what was in their bags and that they knew the basics or who are we where are we supposed to meet you know yeah that's all you need to worry about where are we supposed to meet and if that's not accessible pick a secondary point that's outside of the city you know so these are little things um I just, you know, I wanted to start with, like I said, basics, these, I mean, the food and water, I mean, the water, that's priority to me, because food, we can go a lot longer without food, you know, we'll be hungry, and mm -hmm. we'll probably be hangry, <laughs> mm -hmm. but, but we'll be alive, you know, yeah. Um. so these are, you know, these are things that I wanted to make sure were a priority, you know, making a plan, having basics, and, and having a, de a designated place to meet, um, at least, you know, basic supplies, not just for your kids, but for your pets, like those kind mm. of things. I have dogs, so like they're, I think my dogs are more prepared than most people. <laughs> I mean, I don't doubt it. <laughs> I mean, it, it's actually probably true. It's funny because it's true. <laughs> Mm -hmm. but I mean they you know like these are things I don't want to have to worry about that if I have to yeah. feed my dog for a couple of days like my dog has his own have their own bags they they take their own stuff I'm not gonna haul their stuff my bag's heavy enough yeah <laughs> they have to haul their own stuff and so even having kids you know um creating them a small pack you know it doesn't have to be heavy but just with mm -hmm. their basic comfort items um, so starting, you know, starting to prepare your family can be a big challenge. Um, and then be, not just because of the finances, but also you 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 may find some, some people who are, are reluctant or don't want to hear it or just, yeah, it's like they just, or think that it's a complete waste of time or yeah. they think that it's, you know, it's, you take it too seriously you know, and they're like, oh, why are you preparing? Or you should yeah. live your life without worrying. I'm like, no, I prepare so that I can live my life without worrying. You, you know, know, you bring up a good point because I feel like um, when you were preparing before the pan COVID pandemic, right? I feel like the COVID pandemic has really helped people wake up to the possibility that things might get crazy really fast. And not just because, you know, we're seeing so many unfortunate things happen as kind of a domino effect of COVID, but it's accelerated some of the, um, the negative impact, right? With job loss, with people kind of, um, you know, desperation, right? And so I think um, one positive that has come from this unfortunate string of events is people are really starting to think forward and they're starting to plan more or just be conscious of, if this was to get worse, what would that look like for my family? Um, yeah. Because I don't feel, I, I feel like those conversations of prepping are happening more and more. And just like you mentioned, it's starting to be part of a normal conversation because we've seen what this could look like on a, on a, on a country scale. And this isn't even a natural disaster. And we, I feel like we're kind of cushioned sometimes in certain parts of the country where we see disastrous storms happening in other countries and far off places and it doesn't really impact us until it happens at home then we're think, believers right right I think people don't realize the importance until it personally impacts them in some way or another mm -hmm. and I think 
people started to wake up when you know the pandemic started happening and they start even even though we all laugh about the fact that people went and bought up all the water and toilet paper but you start to see how things get restocked in the stores and how long it takes and mm-hmm. how fast it comes out of there and how long it takes you to get actually get in the store just to get the supplies by the time you get in there it's probably already out and so noticing these little things you know with the pandemic think about how it would be on a great on a more massive scale i think i think this pandemic was like everyone's wake up call to to this is this is a small disaster compared to what can happen so this is a great place for a pers- people to start, you know, grasping the idea that perhaps we should have, a, you know, a couple weeks worth of food in the house, you know, mm-hmm. but so that we don't have to go outside if we have to quarantine. So I think that started a great base and, and it started, yeah, and it did make it more of a, of a household, a house conversation. And, and, and I think that it's, it's a lot easier to bring up you know, preparation to people now because of everything that's happening. People are more receptive of it because they know that it's needed. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is a great soft disaster to practice on, you know, like yeah. for me, I'm, I'm just kind of taking this as a, as a role, like a rehearsal for the major disaster. Like think, look at these little things that are happening right now. Yeah. This is nothing compared to what's going to happen later. So yeah this as the learning opportunity to improve our preparations that's what i wanted to do um so i actually took the pandemic as a as a as a way to help me better prepare yeah. where am i where am i where am my preps lacking you know what did i realize i i needed more mm-hmm. of when and i had to go back to the store and get some you know so these yeah. are things that help us improve what we have um and then just think about the the needs that we have now are probably the needs that we'll have later. So stock up on those needs, you know? Yeah. 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 And I would imagine through your years of prepping, you've kind of refined what you like to be as your, your main resources, whether it's information or supplies. Um, Not that we want to take the, the resource from you for ourselves, but just in the essence of learning, what are some of the, the, resources that you recommended whether it's supplies or information what are what are you constantly looking at as a prepper I'm looking at everything from learning new skills like hunting and fishing because yeah I don't I'm barely getting on on the road I like archery so I'm, I'm starting to learn that so learning new skills is definitely something that I continuously do and that's my main focus of preparing but the other things that I like to do is actually learn about infections um in fact I work with you know infectious diseases and health education so just knowing a lot of of health information you know what what how to treat different wounds how to make sure you don't get an infection or what what am what antibiotics do I use on on an abscess you know those kind of things and you know I've learned those things that I feel would be useful, you know, mm-hmm. to me and my family when I need them. I mean, the FEMA resources are, are a great, they have a checklist up there that you can mm-hmm. literally go down and check and make sure you have things. Um, but the other thing that I think people lack is um, knowledge about the different places and the different resources in their area. I I hear people saying, you know, it's hard enough to get food on the table with everything with the pandemic happening. And I know a lot of people don't like to ask for help. You know, sometimes it's a pride thing. Sometimes it's just, you know, they don't believe in, in they, they want to be self-sufficient, which is fine. And that's great. But sometimes we need a little help. And there's tons of resources out there in the community, not just from free self-defense classes at the Y or, you know, um, or or perhaps, you know, uh, they have places that give away free food and you may not need it right now, but this is a great way to save on prepping. You can go and get once a week a bag of food and put, put the canned stuff away. 
freeze whatever they give you, you know, if you don't want to spend money on prepping, use the resources you have in your community to get yourself prepared. And you don't even have to spend any money yourself. You can go to clinics and get free condoms. You can, you know, if, if you want to stock up, if you're a female, if you want to stock up on birth control, you know, ask your, ask your provider to give you, you know, extra birth control pills and you can put some away. Or if, you know, another thing that people don't think about is, you know, yeah, like pregnancy when, when she hits the fan, what, you know, what's going to happen with people who are going into labor, like all of these yeah. things. Um, there's just a lot, a lot of things that men don't cover, I think. And that's what I really wanted to start going into. Um, but I also wanted to make sure that, you know, to spread the word that prepping doesn't have to be expensive. You know, you can use the resources and, and go and get free a free backpack for your kid, you know, from one of the local organizations that are giving them away when they do back to school and use their old backpack as their bug out bag, you know, just yeah. there's different ways of obtaining things. And it's a lot of people see it as a handout, but we pay taxes, you know, these, these are resources that are being given out to the community when the community needs them and we've paid taxes for them. It's not a handout if you've been paying your taxes and this mm -hmm. is the service that the community gives back to you, yeah. you know? So if you can't afford prepping, go to the food bank, you know, and get some yeah. stuff for free there. You know, you can go once a week and imagine in, in a month, you could at least have a week's worth of food for your family stored away that yeah. was given free. So there's other things that I, I like to focus on, on when I prepare um, and then just try to see where I can, you know, access those services. There's tons of, um, you know, like harm reduction organizations like I work for who give out free medical supplies, for all the first aid supplies you need to take home mm. without wasting it. You can take it home, you know. So there's a lot of things that are available out there. And I think a lot of people aren't pulling those resources. No, they're not. And so, yeah. So just thinking out of the box with your prepping, because imagine how out of the box you're going to have to think if you have to come up with some food later, you yeah. know? So and those, those resources are for sure going to be exhausted when things really are going crazy. Yeah. It's the first yeah. place people are going to look. And so getting into the habit now. And I love that perspective because a lot of people will, you know, when I ask the questions about resources, they, you know, life skills is always an evolving resource, right? Whether it's hunting and, you know, learning education wise. And a lot of people are taken aback by the price of prepping. And so having the local resources or even knowing about them is such a crucial part of getting on with the prepping journey. So I love that. That's a great point. Fantastic. Yeah, and I mean, just sticking your kids in, in, you know, in like the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts, you know, and teaching them those basic things, because it's not just about, you know, them being prepared, it helps them build social skills, it helps them, you know, yeah, get survival skills. And, and mm -hmm. that way, you know, that they're a little independent, regardless, you know, they're still your child, and you're always going to take care of them, but they will learn how to start fire, and you know, and they will yeah. learn, you know, how to pitch a tent, and they'll know how to do those things. So and it's, it's in a fun way, you know, so, mm -hmm. so accessing those resources too for your family, you know, and, and just obtaining things where you can for free. There's yeah. plenty of free resources out there. And like I said, people think of it as a handout, but no, we pay taxes. This is why these community programs exist because we paid for them already to exist. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's our tax dollars that are being used for these non nonprofit organizations and these community organizations to give away these supplies. So why not go and utilize them? And I mean, even if you don't need food now, you will need food then for sure. And picking it up now is going to be a lot less hassle than picking mm -hmm. it up after. Yeah. No, you make some great if there points. there is any after. Right. That's the if, right? The big part. Um, yeah. And through kind of what you've learned as well, what are some, I hate to use the word hack, right? But I think that's kind of going to grasp what I'm getting at. But what is a, your favorite prepping hack or information tip that was shared with you or you learned that was kind of a, a surprise? Um, for me, I, I actually, of course, I, I was surprised to learn, you know, all of the different uses for tampons. And this is you know, <laughs> something that's, you know, it's out there, but I think that there's a lot of 
bad information that's also being shared out there. Mm. Um, I think that hacks are great because they do solve the immediate problem, but sometimes we don't think about the longer um, yeah. side effects. Like example, you know, uh, what are the, uh, tampons, you know, cause toxic shock, you know, can cause that. So if you're putting it in an open wound, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> to, to stop, to stop the bleeding, stop right? I've seen that for, for gauze, you can use it for gauze, you know, these kind of things. But I mean, those are great hacks, you know, those are great things to have on hand. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that I started doing myself was making my own fire extinguishers. Because in California, there's a big, big, <laughs> big, we're like sitting on a tinderbox, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's the one thing we have in common between our two areas are both flammable. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and so I thought about, you know, how many, you know, fire extinguishers could I have in my house? You know, right now I have five, you know, and, and that it doesn't feel like enough because look at all like the devastation that fires cause. Yeah. Um, so I decided to buy some garden, um, sprayers mm-hmm. and, use those as fire extinguishers with the mixture of water, vinegar, and baking soda. Um, white vinegar and the baking soda actually creates carbon monoxide, which takes away the oxygen from the fire, which it needs to spread. And then, you know, the water and the baking soda, you know, coats the fire itself. And so it will put it out. So these are things that I can more, that I can stock up at a more affordable price. Cause you know, I can buy a 12 pound of baking soda, you know, $7 yeah. and, you know, vinegar and the, everything I bought, I think for one fire extinguisher, which will give me up to five uses was $20. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I have for, I have a extreme extinguisher that I can refill and reuse and not worry once it's out, you know, and, yeah, and the ingredients always- are safe too. Right. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. And, and not just can you keep the ingredients um, as safe. A lot of people, you know, they don't like chemicals and that's cool too, you know, but they're good for, you know, baking soda is the, one of the best things to have around and white vinegar because you can use it to clean. You mm-hmm. can use, you know, uh, baking soda as deodorant. <laughs> you can yeah. use it as toothpaste. You can, there's so many uses. And of course for cleaning and everything, but I mean, I know, ne- I didn't even know that creating that mixture causes that effect hmm. and it's chemistry, you know? So, yeah, you know, there's things that you learn every day, but those little things can help you prep for the long term without having to spend as much. Like I spent yeah. $125 on like six fire extinguishers, one for the bus and five for the house. And I'm like, with, with that many, you know, with that much money, I could have, you know, bought more food, just bought a couple garden sprayers and called it a day, you know, and now I'm starting to, to, to build on supplies that will get me, get me through a longer term scenario. So we're, Mm -hmm. we're looking at, you know, the 12 volt water pumps, you know, to be able to like hose down our own houses if they are on fire, you know, electricity's down. Um, We have, we'll, we'll, you know, we have solar panels and a battery and, you know, an inverter, you know, so these are little things, you know, that you eventually learn, you can do your, on your own, you can provide your own power, you can set up your own little power grid, at least for your basics, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and just like the fire extinguisher thing, there is tons of hacks out there on the internet that you can find and are are definitely useful for whatever it is that you need. It's like YouTube. Yeah, there's so right. YouTube has everything. I think that's absolutely uh, a slogan, right? But I think the, the hack that everybody kind of at one point is familiar with is, you know, something even as small as saving the dryer lint, right? And your toilet paper rolls and using that as fire starters. I think yeah. a lot of people are aware of that one. I know the one that was shared with me was from a prepper that is, you know, their home area is usually ravaged by hurricanes. It knocks out the power, it knocks out water for the city. Mm-hmm. 
And he had suggested to me, if you know that storm uh, season is coming or a storm is actually headed your way to fill all the bathtubs in your house, if you're hunkering down as a water reservoir, I had no idea. And generally the water is pretty safe out of, out of the tap, but even if it's not, now you have a reservoir to filter water at home through like a Brita or a Berkey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I, I had never even thought of that. And then when it was shared with me, it's like, yeah. Who there's such thought about thing, that? There's such thing. I think it's called a water bob or something. Yeah, I saw yeah, that water bob wording. Yeah, that it. goes into <laughs> the tub itself and you just fill it up and it's basically going to, you know, keep all your water as fresh as possible. So no, you know, bacteria and stuff gets in it or even just d- dust particles. If you just yeah. fill up your bathtub, that's cool. You'll have water. Um, but those those actually keep it concealed within, you know, the actual mm-hmm. bag. So it stays a lot safer longer term. Yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, that is a great, yeah, most people don't think about that or the, or the fact that you, a lot of people have these big 50 gallon water heaters in their closets and there's like 50 gallons of water in there. People don't realize it, but you can drain it out from the bottom, you know? Yeah. And, and those are other things, or, you know, maybe if you have a hot tub at your house, you know, that's another place to store your water, you know? So yeah. there's a lot of things that we can do. What I did, um, which was super simple, was create a rain catchment system for our house, Um, especially right now with rainy season. And it's just a diverter for our gutters that goes Mm -hmm. into a rain barrel. And then we use all that water to like hose down the dogs or whatever, you know, Yeah. Um, you can filter it and and boil it if you want it to be extremely safe, but you can drink it. You know, it is drinkable as long as you filter it and you like the microorganisms aren't, you know floating around in there, you're good. Yeah, Uh, that actually, that brings me to kind of the next question I wanted to ask, because I feel like that we're onto something that a lot of people miss, right? For, for, I mean, in the short amount of time that I feel like I've been prepping compared to experts in my eyes, like you, um, I think what a lot of people forget is how to filter out water, how to be safe with like medical things, because I feel like in a panic, we'll see a body of water, a stagnant body of water, right? And just assume that it's it's drinkable, but there's microorganisms, there's bacteria. Yeah. And also if you're wounded, you know, in some of the movies, they just go down to the river and splash, you know, wash their wound and all is well. It doesn't really work like that. It takes a little bit of knowledge to know what's safe, how to approach things. And so I feel like that's kind of in the small print of what many people kind of miss when they're kind of they're starting on this prep journey and and beginning to learn yeah a lot of people think it's like okay let's just pack you know let's just stash water and and we're good or or we'll just collect it from the river down or you know or the community pool or whatever um but how many people are thinking that you know that they're just going to go down to the community pool and grab some water or or go down to the local store but i think with with the knowledge of, of how you can obtain water, you know, comes, yeah, you're right, comes the, the questions, how do, make, how do we make sure that this is safe enough for us to drink and, you know, mm-hmm. and make sure that it's clean enough for us to, to wash in because, you know, hygiene and cause, you know, leads to infection. If you don't take yeah. care of yourself, you're going to eventually, you know, if you can't keep your, your wounds clean, you're going to get an infection. So there's a lot of things that people don't realize you can, you know, you can have the Brita. The Brita is super, super efficient. I love Brita. <laughs> you, you don't have to have that brand, but just have a water filter. Yeah, water filter. filter. Um, what I also bought from my family, which was on the larger scale, was our um, our survival, I believe it's survival, no, the life straw, um, but mm-hmm. it's a big, it's the big one for, for mm. a larger amount of water. So I think it's like 4,000 gallons or something. That's a lot, Um, wow. Yeah, so I bought one of those because you can do everything from, you know, boiling it to filtering it, but not just that, you can reuse the water that you're using. You can filter it out yourself, you know, clean out the the sediment first, you know, and provide that first filter and then, you know, move it, move it through another filter. And you might not be able to drink it, but you may be able to reuse it for something else like washing, you know, or, or washing, you know, your clothes, you know, if you took a shower and you can filter that water out, I mean, you're just 
basically going to reuse that water. You can wash your clothes with it if you filter it, you know, in a proper way. Um, right. There's just other, there's, there's ways of being resourceful and uh, there's ways of, you know, procuring water. And, and I think that p- people overlook the fact that water's in abundance right now. And as soon as we turn on the tap, the water's there, but it's convenient how disaster, it's piped to us <laughs> yeah. in, a, in a disaster the electricity might be out. And if the electricity is out and, and the city's, you know, generators go out, no one's going to have any running water. Mm. Meaning you can't flush toilets. You can't take showers. You can't wash your hands. You can't drink water from the faucet. So these are things that people are like, oh, well, I'll just get water from the faucet. No, if the electricity is down, then your faucet's not going to be working either. Right. You know, so these are little things people don't realize. Um, And how do you obtain water in in an area that is so freaking packed? There's so many people now. And how how many people is there in the Bay Area? Like 10 million? Uh, yeah so I mean like imagine yeah. 10 million people with no water like what what is it gonna look like do you think it's you're not really a place I would want to be no no not <laughs> at all. like we so, plan to leave we plan to leave as soon as the disaster happens if we don't get a heads up before yeah yeah, yeah. and I think that is kind of shared you know, getting out of a densely populated area is, is something that's kind of shared. I know that's, um, that's everyone's plan. Everyone. Yeah. And, and it's going to go perfectly and we're going to be able to leave and grab all our stuff and everything's going to go flawlessly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's how, I mean, in our minds, right. But yeah, no, in, our, in our minds, it's like, yeah, I'm just going to go home and then grab my family and grab the bags and get our bug out bag or ba- b- bags and our bug out vehicle and get out of Dodge and, you know, freaking zoom past everyone who's blocked in traffic, but miraculously we won't be, <laughs> yeah. you know, like there's I always think, something. Yeah. There's always something. I, I try to, to live off road as much as possible. Now I com- I, well, now this is my second bus, but I converted, I'm starting the conversion on my bug out bus. Uh, this is my second bus. I downsized because I want to be able to go off road, mm-hmm. uh, but have the a bit more agile, the smaller mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The smaller one, it's not as top heavy. doesn't, it's like, a, if you would have got a bigger one, it's like a big trailer, you know, try to take that off road. Like, no, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's, like an, it's like an earthquake driving that thing off road all by itself. But I decided to downsize so that we could have just enough basics, a bed in there, you know, a basic cooking area, you know, just somewhere, a home base, you know, a small mm-hmm. home away from home in the meantime, while we got ourselves back together, you know? Yeah. And, and I think a lot of people, they're like, okay, it's all good. You know, I have earthquake insurance. I have fire insurance, but it's like, okay, so you're going to be dealing with those companies for how long to yeah. get your tech? to get reimbursed. You, you know, what's crazy is there were past instance, instances also where, let's say a natural disaster like that happens. Sometimes with insurance uh, companies, there are clauses where it's like an act of God clause, where if it's something that is um, really a, like a natural disaster beyond belief, mm-hmm. they are exempt from you know, a certain amount of honest, aid. And to be honest, how are you going to call them if you don't have a phone not working, the landlines are down and electricity's down? And I'm, I'm sorry to say you're most likely insured with, with a company that works within your state. And if your whole state is devastated, that means their company shut down. Mm. Whoever you're trying to call is not going to be there. Mm. So the company has to go back to work. Who's going to go back to work after a major disaster? Yeah. And how long are you going to be waiting for that reimbursement if it happens? Exactly. I mean, huge, huge things to think about because I I think we as a society have become ultra reliant, ultra reliant on the conveniences that have just made our life very plush. Right. And we don't often think about these situations because they feel far off or they feel like these things only happen in places that are um, quite removed from our daily lives. And that's not that's not real, right? It wasn't that long ago we had massive earthquakes in the Bay Area, you know, in the 80s. It shook the entire Bay Area, right? And we had one a couple of years ago up here in Napa that really was felt so far, right? And so that's just earthquakes. 
Yeah. This year, our whole state, this, I mean, I'm talking about California this year, our whole state was on fire at one point. I mean, with the things that we're seeing, um, these disasters are happening with much more intensity and it's becoming more frequent. There's no reason we have, we aren't having these conversations more with other people and sharing knowledge or inspiring people to, to think about it. And I know I kind of went through all of my questions and thank you so much for entertaining uh, me today with that. But I think what I really love about your approach is you're changing the narrative of prepping because gone are the days where people think of prepper and they think of the guy that has a bunker in the mountain, right? Yeah. I think the more we can equip our families and our loved ones to think about these things, be self-reliant, self-sufficient, and to be more prepared, even on a basic level, we can avoid a lot of those places like Costco and Sam's Club and the crazy lines, right? Especially right now when we're seeing the pandemic, right? Um, and infectious diseases and how that can spread. Do you really want to be in a crowd, right? Do you really want it? Because people are unpredictable. Desperate people are even more unpredictable. Um, and I know I shared this with you where that's not somewhere we want to be. So, yeah. you know, I appreciate kind of what you've shared. I really love your perspective. I think it's very unique compared to just the sea of what we're, we have in the, in the prepping community. And I hope that this can inspire other people to ask themselves the, these types of questions. And I want to make sure that I include kind of the link to your YouTube. I think you shared some really amazing things besides your bus, uh, which I have been following. I love the journey of your bus. It's taken on a life of its own. But yeah. also I think the nice thing is, you know, some of the hacks and the, the tricks and tips that you have already shared on both your YouTube and your Instagram have been really motivating for people to kind of ask themselves that. And it's funny because at one point we both talked about fire extinguishers on different capacities and different levels, but that kind of just shows how even one topic, the knowledge is so vast yes. and there's something to be taken away from, from everybody who's kind of looking yes. into one, one specific thing. So I just wanted to thank you for this time. I really enjoyed the conversation. Um, and uh, we'll want, I want to make sure I share out our video today. Make sure I include your uh, direct YouTube and Instagram. You are Femme Prepper. Yeah. And uh, it's been a joy getting to know you even you know, personally. I know our, our conversations behind the scenes, but you're an inspiration to so many. And please keep doing what you're doing and motivating people to get, stay prepped. It's great. I mean, it's great to have other women out there and, you know, <laughs> you're new to, to the prepping journey, but you bring a, you know, a completely different perspective. And I think the more of us there is out there, the better we can prepare. 